On average, UK house prices have risen by a massive 10% over the last 12 months, making it the biggest jump in years. What do you feel when you walk past a house like this? Envy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Meaning more of us than ever before are choosing to build rather than buy our ideal home. How hard can it be? Cut to a scene of the house falling down. <laughs> They're going to have to rip the guts out of this house. I'm actually <sighs> sweating. These builds can be the chance of a lifetime. The whole thing is being designed around your wheelie bin. <laughs> as crazy as it may sound, yes. <laughs> There are risks. Fingers crossed the bank give us the money to finish the second floor. So why is the ridge not sitting on the oak beam? It's been cut wrong. But get it right. And the home of your dreams. That is a world away from the rundown house it once was. Could be right on your doorstep. Oh, this is brilliant. That's what I always wanted, a family home. And now you've got... Oh. <laughs> They're happy tears, aren't they? Because it's so fabulous. It's a common problem that houses seem to shrink as families expand and children grow up. But for homeowners who can't afford to buy the dream home, there is another exciting option. When individual or family requirements change and no longer suit your living arrangements, you could be creative with the home you've got and make it work for you all. Which is exactly what these two families intend to do. In Wales, Darren and Tracy have big plans for their three-bed 1930s detached home and even bigger creative differences. The style I'm looking for is very clean, very minimalist and very white. You know, I want... It just shows a lack of I don't know, creativity in my eyes. No, it's stylish. That's, that's the issue. But first, I'm off to a village near Milton Keynes to meet medical recruiter Russell and his partner Carmel and their young son Freddie. They have this turn-of-the-century two-up-two-down cottage in pretty Bow Brickhill, which is worth £250,000. What initially attracted us to this property was the fact that um, the golf club is two minutes up the road, Russ. This is very true. And the whole country cottage feel to the house and the fact that we couldn't afford somewhere with land, but yet when I look out my bedroom window, I've got a green field in front of me. It may have history and charm, but with baby number two just around the corner and Russell running his business from home, the interior is just too small. That way. Can I take your email address? Okay. As we are a growing family, you know, space is, is key due to the nature of the house itself, you know, the way it's been put together over the years. It's a bit of a jumble. The garage, it's unused at the minute, apart from our junk, basically. It's a shame, really, to not to turn that into usable space. Russell and Carmel are planning to make more room. The floor plan of the house is kind of going to be what it is. But extending an old higgledy-piggledy cottage is rarely simple. So I want to find out why they fell in love with it. What an amazing place to live. Have you always lived around this area? Yeah, it's an area that we've both always lived in. It's just an area that we both love. Ten minutes from both sets of grandparents. I play golf at the local club at the road. Um, we've got the you know, Milton Keynes, which is the local city to us, so we've got all the amenities that you want, really, but still in a rural location. It's got the country cottage, chocolate box house, and the local schools. It's village life, basically. But living in a picturesque village surrounded by open countryside and woodland, only 50 miles from London, doesn't come cheap. The average asking price here is half a million pounds, which Russell and Carmel simply don't have. If they did, this is what they'd buy. What is it you like about this? Oh, it's beautiful. Um, all the period and character features that are in the house. So you're quite traditional in how you would like things to be. Yeah, you can go into some of these new developments and buy a house and it's a bit like a box. Uh, we like something with a bit of character, definitely. Your house is currently worth about 250,000. Yep. And this house is probably worth about 575,000. So you'd need to find another 325,000 pounds. And 
How much have you got? That much? We've got about 50,000. That's not really going to cut the mustard, <laughs> is it? Russell and Carmel's dream home would cost £575,000. Their house is worth less than half of that, leaving them £325,000 short. And they've only got £50,000 to create this from this. Their hard-earned savings are going to have to stretch a long way to create Russell and Carmel's bigger family home. As if an impending baby and tight budget aren't challenging enough, this house is a very difficult one to extend. It's a really sweet little cottage, but it's going to be tricky for them to build up. It's very unlikely you'd ever be allowed to raise that ridge so that they don't avoid the houses behind losing their view. So the only option in terms of extending is to go down and dig into the hillside, which may be sensible, but it's inches away from really quite a busy road where there's a lot of traffic. And that is going to make building really complicated. And inside, between the garage and the cottage, is another busy thoroughfare. So you've got this twisty little hallway, which is actually the external outside path, really, yeah. from the original house. So here's the original house, and someone at some point just covered over the path. Yeah, we don't really know what they're thinking when they put this in. So what do you currently use this outside corridor for? Storage of prams, golf clubs, the freezers out here. So nice view as you walk into the house. Lovely, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> The actual cottage is charming, but very small. This is the cottage, really, isn't it? Yeah. So why does it not work for you, this space? We seem to sit here, watch telly, Freddie plays, Freddie eats, we eat, all in one little cramped space, really. So it'd be nice to make that individual move of eating in the kitchen, living in here only, really. Upstairs, the cramped layout is causing another problem. Well, it's a lovely bedroom, but... That's the only bathroom, so you have to walk through Freddie's bedroom to get to the bathroom. Yeah, I have woken him up on various occasions. You're trying to keep a child asleep, not wake him up, so it's not ideal. No. With another baby on the way, it's going to be more and more tricky coping in the space, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, because where's the other cot going to go? And from here, you can really see why, why presumably you bought the house. What an amazing view. Not being able to afford a house with land, but yet, when I look out my window, I've got it, so... Yeah. There may be a great view at the front, but there's very little space at the back where they plan to extend. Because of the hill, this is much more complex than it would normally be, because otherwise you just strip it back to the, the boundary lines and you'd bring it back into being a garden. But the major issue here is digging. All of this take the whole lot away. Enormous amounts of your budget is going to be taken up by a digger taking your house away. That's kind of scary. It's an ambitious build for first-time project manager Russell and Carmel to take on. They intend to knock down the double garage and hallway and replace them. Downstairs, Part of what was the garage will be linked to the original cottage to create a large family kitchen and at the far end of the extension will be a study for Russell. While upstairs, the new extension will be used to create a third bedroom, a master with ensuite for the couple. But I fear Carmel and Russell have forgotten one important element. They're digging down and building into the hillside, so they need to think about how to avoid it ending up like a cave. The only question mark that I have is that there's no windows. You've got a bit of garden at the back here. Actually, there's no reason why you can't dig out. Just give yourself a little bit of space, which will enable you to have windows at the back, which would make all the difference in the world, because otherwise it's going to be like little mole's house otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> would I just be looking out at a retaining brick wall? Is it just more... It's just going to let light and air? Light and air rather than... Nothing, Nothing is yeah. is good. Have you have you thought about doing any of these things? It's something we haven't haven't looked at, to be honest. They're going to have to rip the guts out of this house, and I don't think that they realise quite how much time or money that is likely to take. Both of which they don't have very much of. Do you think the study needs to be as big as it is? Or I am worried that I've only really 
opened my eyes to the plans and the garden and actually the extent of the work and how far they're going to dig down. So I probably am a little bit more worried now. I'm actually <sighs> sweating. Next, I'm off to Wales to meet telephone engineer Darren and his wife, Tracy, who desperately want to stay in the area they love, Land Aff, near Cardiff. I was looking at to go to school here as a, as a child, and I always swore that um, I'd live here one day. They have a 1930s detached house, which they share with their eight-year-old daughter, Isabella, and ten-year-old son, Byron. With growing children, they know they're going to need more space. For family man Darren, it's the galley kitchen that's the biggest squeeze. The only storage I have for pots and pans uh, uh, in, are in this one in this one here. The only place I have for cutlery is this, <laughs> this tiny little drawer here. It, it isn't for, fit for purpose anymore, not for a family. It's too, way too narrow. But it's Isabella's bedroom that's the real bugbear for Tracy. It's very, very small and totally impractical. She just hasn't got any room to manoeuvre. It's just awful. They love the area, but they can't afford to buy what they want. We couldn't find anything within our price range that we thought we'd just move into without spending any money on. Not wanting to leave their beloved town of Landef, Darren and Tracy decided to put all their savings into creating rather than buying their perfect home. But if they could afford to buy here, this is what they'd choose. So what is it that you like about it in particular? I really love the, what they've done internally with the, the open plan living inside and they've managed to maximise the light. It feels really bright and airy. So that's something you'd like to try and have is a light and bright house? Exactly, we'd love to maximise the, the use of light in our house. This would be worth probably about 620,000 and your house is worth about 320,000 yeah. so you need to find another 300,000. Yes. Yeah. And so do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> So how much have you got? Uh, we have a budget of £80,000. OK. It's a challenge ahead. <laughs> <laughs> to buy their dream home would cost £620,000, but their home is worth three hundred and twenty, meaning they'd need an extra £300,000. Unfortunately, their budget doesn't quite stretch to that. This house is actually lovely from the outside. The problem with this, though, is that it's only skin deep. Behind the facade, there's not a lot going on. Darren and Tracy's house has space to develop at the back and also at the side if the ugly lean-to currently used as their dining room is removed. But they'll have to be careful building into the north-facing garden as they could risk excluding valuable light. This is great, so let's go have a look around. The house has a generous entrance hall, typical for a 1930s layout, as is the large living room and small kitchen at the back. So you're planning on going back a little bit and out sideways in both directions? I've always wanted a long island where the children can sit while Darren's cooking, because he's the chef. So while he's cooking, the children can do their work around the island. I can be sat on the sofa with a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs are the children's bedrooms, a decent-sized family bathroom, and what is currently Darren and Tracy's room, but not for long. This will be Isabella's room. Because, okay. you know, she's a girl growing up now and she's in a that tiny little bedroom. Well, Believe it or not, there's a, a shower, shower in, in here. The, in the cupboard? It was so... Oh, it was... Shower cupboard! <laughs> <laughs> Tracy on our plan says um, ambitions of making it an ensuite. It would be great for our girly mates. When our girly mates come for a sleepover, they're all self-contained. If I'm honest with you, Sarah, I, I think it's a bad idea. And we, we have constant arguments about this all the time. I think it's too narrow. I prefer it as storage because we don't have any storage in the house, really. It'd be no bad thing to have an extra... Extra little shower. I'm siding with you here. <laughs> <laughs> Darren and Tracy plan to transform the back of the house with a massive two story extension on three sides, so they'll have to make the most of every penny in their budget. Downstairs, the existing galley style kitchen and awkward lean to will be removed and replaced with an enormous L shaped kitchen diner and lounge area. Upstairs, they'll rework the layout to incorporate a more practical ensuite from that minute shower cupboard. In the new extension, there'll be a large master bedroom and a further bathroom. But Darren and Tracy's dream of open plan living has thrown up a problem. Because it's a, a wraparound extension, we need to hold up 
the, the corner part of the house, which means we have to have a supporting pillar. And unfortunately, now we'll be in the middle of our new dining room. The posts can work if it's a natural point for a divide into another room, but it's not it's in the middle of the I space. Know. It'd be like a maypole. In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be brilliant if you want to do pole yeah, dancing, but other than that. <laughs> I, do, I do have a bikini floating around. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to have a corner post holding the corner of the house up. The corner point of the house can bear on steels rather than on a post. It won't be cheap. Sometimes it's not worth it in this situation. I think it would be a real shame not to spend the extra money. When you're creating a home, it's essential that you spend in the right areas. The idea she's come out with today, we wouldn't have thought of, and mm. she's just you know, put it all into perspective for us really today. And, and you didn't say no to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs>
The removal of the garage exposes some large cracks in the wall and Russell has to call in a structural engineer to assess the problem. We're going to be in danger of undermining this wall. The issue is going to be when we yeah, reduce the level here, this retaining wall is going to become unstable because yes. there's going to be no earth in front of it to stabilise it. Yep. So the risk of that failing is quite high. And we've also got the conscious that there's a house there which is sitting higher than us, which is also supported on this earth. Yep. We don't want that house to start migrating onto our site. So what would you kind of recommend would be the best port of call for it then? The simplest solution is probably to install sort of sheet pile retaining wall okay. along the boundary here, which you could drive to a lower level. That will stabilise the boundary of your property. Excellent. And everything inside that on okay. your side will be, you know, be future-proofed. Until a retaining wall is installed, Russell can't lay any foundations for the extension. OK, Russell, good to see you. <laughs> so no sooner than it started, the project grinds to a halt. Shocking news, you know, I've got no idea how much these sort of things cost to get done, so, you know, that's quite worrying. <laughs> and after receiving several quotes for the suggested sheet piling work, Russell's worst fears are confirmed. The best quote we've had in so far is around £22,500, uh, not including VAT. It's a big decision to make that extra overspend, but you know the re reality of it is that if we don't do it, the, the project in its current form can't go ahead. So we'd either have to review the plans or how we're going to extend the house um, or just stop it. The walls are set to cost nearly half their budget. This could mean the end of their dream of a bigger family home. While the fate of the project looks gloomy in Buckinghamshire, in Wales I'm concerned about darkness of a different sort in their vast new extension. Darren and Tracy and their two kids have completely outgrown their house, but getting the space they need whilst not losing the light they need is going to be a very fine balancing act. The lean-to has gone, the foundations are in and the walls are about to go up. But since the extension will be north-facing and huge, they'll need to boost natural light as much as possible. There are a few tricks that you can use which are not that expensive and actually quite effective in terms of bouncing the light, stealing the light effectively and throwing it back into the house and they're all based on reflection really. The first of these, reflective balls which are about 30 quid for a set. Another option is this which is an acrylic uh, sheet. This is light mirror but it's 80% lighter. It pulls the light down and will push it in another direction so that will really help. I also wanted to show you this which is a heliostat and what it does, it takes the sun from one direction and you can put, make it point into any of the windows of your house or into the garden. So it effectively is stealing the sun. It's a little space age, isn't it? It looks like we could track the Hubble telescope. But, um, you know, uh, I think it's a fantastic idea and it did shed a lot of light into the house, didn't it? So, might be something, certainly something worth thinking about, yeah. yeah. I quite like that. <laughs> it's a very good way of having a sunny room if nature just won't do her stuff. And it'll be a fantastic talking point as well. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's the quirky solutions that can be the most effective, and in this case, enlightening. And things are moving in Bow Brick Hill too, where Russell's found a much less costly retaining wall. By going down the method of having the, uh, the concrete blocks, it's infinitely cheaper than sheet piling. It may cost less, but concrete takes longer to install, as it has to be done in stages. Still, it's what they can afford. This was always a complicated plot because of the road and the hillside that it was set into. However, they have had endless delays. And now, six months later, with the pitter and patter of tiny feet, they finally, hopefully, are properly underway. As the diggers move in, it's all systems go on site. You've been doing some serious digging here, haven't you? Yeah, it's pretty epic. We've still got probably another seven, eight grab lorries to go, and I mean, they're 18 tonne of time, and it's, we've probably had 10, 12 of those already. It's, it's unbelievable. This part of the build is engineering, really. Yeah. Do you think that this first phase of actually getting a site that you can build on was a bigger job than anyone, any of you really realised? Yeah, I think first project went into it naively and thought, you know, it'd be okay. It's been quite tedious, just the process of 
how they've had to do it. You decided to delay the start of the build until your baby was born, didn't you? Yeah, I think if I'd been pregnant and came and seen this, I would have given birth here. <laughs> <laughs> This build has thrown up some problems even an experienced project manager would find a challenge. And with weeks of delays, the end is still nowhere in sight. If this was still building in a year's time, would that be all right? Would that be? No, no it wouldn't. It wouldn't. <laughs> no. Six months, OK? I don't think I could cope with that. And so for me, and for Russell's sake, the quicker the better, because... Because you're going to kill him? Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd be lucky to be in a couple of months at this rate. However, this might be a solution to get you in quicker. A modular loft system is a great way to speed up a build. Rather than building on site, entire roof sections are engineered off site and craned into position. The cost of a modular loft ranges depending on size and specification. And although they have a lead time of eight weeks, they can be installed in just two days. If you went ahead with this, the first floor and roof can be built at the same time as the footings are being poured yeah. and the, the ground floor is being built. Because otherwise, you've got to build the ground floor, then you've yeah. got to build the first floor, and then you've got to build the roof. And it'll just take a lot longer in the big scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, it's been a struggle at times to get some of the materials on site and also where we put them. So, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic solution. The advantage of a modular loft is that it can be built off-site whilst the braziers have over 300 tonnes of earth removed. But project manager Russell is a bit overwhelmed. I think it's going to be a question of spending a lot of time up here in the evenings and just doing as much as we possibly can to kind of get it as ready as possible for the trays to come in. This building site is finally underway, but there's been a lot of problems with, with getting it to this stage. And I just slightly worry just how long it's going to be until it actually gets finished. In a village outside Milton Keynes, the Braziers want to convert their tiny cottage into a three-bed family home for just £50,000. After lengthy delays, eight months since we first discussed their plans, the concrete arrives for the foundations. Great to see it going, finally. They can kind of crack on now with actually the building phase of it. It's a big relief, really big relief. Over in Landaff, Near Cardiff, Darren and Tracy are using their hard-earned savings to renovate the 1930s detached house they've owned for 10 years. The block work is underway and steels are going in. But how is project manager and keen cleaner Tracy coping on the home front? So how have you found it having a smaller kitchen that's effectively now a building site-ish? It's not been too bad because obviously it's been boarded. At the moment it's containable, but once they do the knock through, um, I know it's going to be carnage. What, what do you do when you're really stressed? Drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's in the budget. Back in Buckinghamshire, Russell and Carmel have chosen not to put windows in the back of the extension. The fact that we've got a three metre high retaining wall behind us, it's just, it's, it'd be pointless. Who wants to look into a concrete block, you know, it'd be like being in a prison. I wonder if they might regret their decision, but I do have another way to lighten things up. So I wanted to show you one option for artificially lighting a room, which instead of looking like artificial light, actually can get the same effect as daylight. OK. So these are LED panels and... Um, if I plug them in, you can get them in cool light, which is more like daylight, yeah. or warm light, white, which is more like artificial light as we know it. So the two options, once you've got these panels, are either you can put it behind frosted glass, say behind a window, and you end up with this effect, or you can use just a diffuser, which is this. So you can put that over the top and you lose the effect of the, okay. the squares, the LED squares. So actually, they make a huge difference in an area like this. You can see, it actually, oh, wow. it really lights yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. Well, it's, they're really powerful. Yeah. So these would be a really simple solution to bringing daylight. And if that was the window there, 
It's really convincing. Sun's always shining. Oh, yes. You can buy custom-made LED panels online with prices starting from just £50, which must be fitted by an electrician. I think they will totally transform the way the extension feels. And with the build finally taking shape, things are already looking brighter. I'm just delighted that we're not digging muck out anymore because that was just soul-destroying. A month after the concrete foundations, the steel supports are going in. You slide it. The old beams are coming down. Getting bigger every day. And work finally starts on the roof. Bit of a big moment, really. Such a, a long journey to get to where we are now. It's just great to see that physical shape of the, the building taking place. After a delayed start to this build, slowly the roof takes shape. But over in Wales, things are steaming ahead, and after nine weeks, the Abdullah's spectacular double extension is up. Well, I've come in from work, and they've taken off the back of the house. With the roof gone up, it looks like a proper extension now. It's just mad. It's, it's amazing. Fair play. More steels are going in around her, and she may be without a kitchen, but Tracy's still a domestic goddess. And there we have it, washing up and washing, multitasking. And Tracy's proving a tidy project manager too, despite it being her first time. We're bang on schedule. Andrew's promised me wholeheartedly that he will be finished on really? time. <laughs> We're in the home straight now. It feels like, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, yes, yeah, very exciting time. The Abdullahs even have time to think about some finishing touches to put a unique stamp on their new dream home. Bespoke stained glass windows are a great way of incorporating personality into a build. And the kids have brought along some designs for inspiration. Do you want to show your designs to Dave? That's beautiful, yeah, isn't it? Ideal. Beautiful pictures. The normal stained glass that people start off with is the hill, the sun and the sunray. So if you stuck to the simplest design, you could do a stained glass window for as little as what? Um, well, a little panel uh, for a front door or whatever, you'd be talking of about £65. When a family build a house, the children often get left out of the design decisions. And designing a piece of stained glass is a fantastic way of having something permanent to give them ownership of one section of the house. And it's really affordable. I think Byron and Isabella are going to be pretty pleased with the end result. A piece of bespoke artwork is a fantastic way to personalise a space. A stained glass window is just one way to give a room a character all of its own. Painted murals are a great way of livening up a room, particularly for kids. There are also companies that can transform a cherished family snap into an attention-grabbing feature wall. And a light installation can brighten up even the darkest of corners. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. Over in Buckinghamshire, the braziers are a long way from decorative touches. Nine months ago, Russell and Carmel were planning to convert a pokey two-bed cottage into a spacious three-bed family home. They've been thwarted by delays, I don't think I can take the start of a new build and going into labour all in one day. <sighs> Sweating. They face costly, unforeseen setbacks. The best quote we've had in so far is around £22,500. It's a big decision to make that extra overspend. But they've stood their ground. The scale of the retaining wall has just meant that we've had to take our time with it. And they've ploughed on with their labour of love. First project went into it naively. It's been nine months since Russ and Carmel were meant to start what they thought would be a full month build. But since then, they've been hit with delay after delay. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they got on. Previously, their tiny hillside cottage had a disused double garage next to it. Nearly a year on, the new two-storey extension has replaced the garages, and although it's unfinished, the shape of things to come is obvious. Instead of a garage, you've now really pretty much doubled the size of the house. 
Is it all worth it? Yeah, for me, it's, it's now getting exciting. My hands have gone from here to here. <laughs> now I can start thinking about all oh, colours and what we're going to do here and what's going to go in this space, cos it's, it's all real for me now. Does that mean I can stop? No. Uh, <laughs> Inside, that awkward corridor that ran between the cottage and the garages has been replaced by a new room opening onto the extension. And it's here that the real transformation will take place. What I love about it is that you've, you, you're going to have two separate spaces, but you will have a sight line from one to the other. So it's part of one room, but it's not all one big open space. Yeah, I think we were going for like open planned, but still have like the quirky cottage feel to it and have like the nook and cranny little corners and stuff. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll have kept that. Will you put LED light panels in, do you think? Maybe for the downstairs toilet, it's not going to have a window, so maybe in there. Well, the best piece of advice, I think, is to, to have more rather than less. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a lot cheaper than fitting it afterwards. And so out here is the new garden. Yeah. When finished, it will house Russell's office at the front, making the best use of the natural light. Next to this will be the downstairs loo. And in front of them, there'll be a new utility room and hallway. But the real gem will be on the other side of the wall. When complete, they'll have a beautiful traditional style kitchen with soft lines, duck egg blue units and solid oak worktops. Upstairs, Russell and Carmel will no longer have to creep through Freddie's room to get to the bathroom, as they'll soon have their very own generous master bedroom and luxury ensuite. At the back of the house, the dilapidated, dangerous garden has gone and is now a safe haven that all the family will be able to enjoy. Now that this space is a proper garden, being hemmed in on all sides actually means that it's a really gorgeous little retreat rather than a bit of a problem. From what it was to what it is now, I can see ourselves spending a lot of time out here now, which is great. But with the house still far from finished, have the last nine tough months been worth it? Now, it's been a bit of an upheaval, this, hasn't it? Has this taken a lot longer than you expected? It's taken a toll more than time. Um... Really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Going into your first project, you're kind of a bit blasé about, oh, yeah, it won't be that bad. If you throw loads of money at it, then, yeah, you could we could probably be living in it now, but that's just not, it's not practical. You were hoping to spend 50,000 on it. How much will you end up spending, do you think, by the time it's finished? It's going to be a, end up around 75,000 to 80,000. Right, so 80,000 probably by the time you've got it all finished completely, which is you know, really impressive, actually, because you've done an awful lot of work. Although a lot of it you can't see, yeah. you've had to do an awful lot of work. Their dream home would have cost them £575,000, but their home was only worth 250000 meaning they would have needed an extra £325,000 to buy it. But when finished, they hope to have created their perfect house for around £80,000, which is a whopping 245000 less than they would have spent on their dream home. And they could be on their way to making a tidy profit. If you did decide to sell it, I think it would be worth 375000 when it's finished. So that would be £45,000 of equity you've created. You know? Wow. So well you don't rust. <laughs> I'll let you off. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the fact you've got a perfect house, the perfect house of your dreams. Will it be a home for a long time, do you think? If we move on, it'll be because more children or...? More children? Mm. <laughs> Russ and Carmel had a real uphill battle with this build, which has meant that nine months on, they're still not quite finished. Over the next few months, though, I'm hoping that they'll end up with a beautiful home for them all to enjoy. But over in Wales, they are racing to the finishing line and are almost there. It's going to be life-changing. In Wales, Darren and Tracy are upsizing their cramped 1930s house into an expansive family home. Their huge wraparound extension is in the final stages. 
the windows are being fitted and the porch is taking shape. The porch, I think, is going to be life-changing because it means this area here is all going to be boxed in and then there won't be anything anywhere else. It'll just be a nice, clean entrance to the house. It'll be great. The old part of the house has been knocked through into the extension and thanks to the steels hidden in the walls and ceiling, there is no ugly post in the open-plan kitchen diner. Upstairs, the plasterers are moving in. And even in the midst of the final push, Tracy still has time to clean up. Oh, you never be too clean. Never, you can never be too clean. It's just, you just got to keep on top of it, otherwise the house will just look like a complete... I know it looks like a bomb site now, but um, it's, just, ooh, it's just trying to keep on top of everything, isn't it, and keep it as tidy as we possibly can. It's four months since Darren and Tracy began transforming their overcrowded two-bedroom detached house into an open-plan, stylish three-bed home of their dreams. Along the way, they've made compromises. An awful lot of money. We just have to cut back in other ways. They thought creatively. It's a little space age, isn't it? It looks like we could track the Hubble telescope. And they've kept a building site tidy. I really detest mess. I just can't stand it. And finally, this house is a new home. Darren and Tracy were desperate for more space for their family. I just hope they've managed to get that space without losing too much of the light in their home. A few months ago, this house was dark, restricted and had ugly add-ons at the side. Oh, that looks great. The extension of the porch really blend into the original house. Now they've given it a stylish entrance and a huge, sleek wraparound extension. Hi, Hi hello, how are, how are you? Are you? Very, Very well, well, thank you, thanks. Previously, there was an unsightly lean-to used as a family dining area. And across the rear of the house was a narrow galley-style kitchen. Now, with the help of a few steels, the rear of the house has been opened up. Oh, look at this! Amazing! <gasps> and this modern kitchen diner has given them the open-plan living space they always wanted. It's a fantastic space and the light is fantastic in here now. It was quite dark, but actually with the roof light flooding light in from above and then the doors to outside with, of course, the heliostat throwing light back in again. And it feels really quite light in here, so... You've ticked that box, certainly, haven't you, for light. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic windows. I love those okay. windows. So those are the kids. Yeah, the they are, yeah. Originals. They'll be worth millions. But... <laughs> I love that they are. They're my favourite part of the house. Is it? Yeah. Oh. And, of course, the other issue was the post that you were going to have. It did cost more, didn't it? It did. But it was well worth it, because the post would have been exactly where that dining chair is by there, so we wouldn't have been able to sit at a dining table. It would have been very frustrating unless you were a maypole dancer. <laughs> <laughs> And next to the dining area, there's a beautiful kitchen complete with seating area. And where Darren's triumphed over the porch, Tracy's come up trumps with her white kitchen. Well, this clearly works so much better for you as a kitchen. It's amazing and very white. And for somebody who likes, likes things to be clean. It is exactly as I planned it to be. Oh, it's a fantastic space to be in. Even the morning, getting the children ready, having their breakfast. It's quite civilised, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's still chaos, it's well, still chaos, yes, but, yes, yes. but a better kind, yeah. <laughs> Upstairs, the shower cupboard has been removed, creating a bright and elegant landing. It's brilliant. It feels like a much bigger house now when you're upstairs, it's great. Yeah. Often people think that landing space is a waste of space, but it's completely changed the way this house feels, having just that little bit of extra space and being able to have a chair on the landing. Yeah. Are you happy you ended up with a porch instead of having a third bathroom? Yeah, we are, and our ensuite is huge, so, you know, we're really lucky. We've got a toilet downstairs as well. Oh, pretty bonus. So, yeah. <laughs> the rest of upstairs has been remodelled to suit the family's needs. A new boutique bathroom, a stylish study, and most importantly, the children now have decent-sized rooms to call their own. So what do the kids make of the whole new house, do you think? Well, they absolutely love it, because it means now they can both have sleepovers. So in this room, in Isabella's bed, she's got another bed underneath. So it's, you know, it's life-changing for them. They love it. They've transformed their cramped old house into a beautiful new home, 
But are they on budget? When you started this project, it was worth about £320,000 and you were planning on spending about £80,000 on it. Yeah. How much did you end up spending? Just under £80,000. Yeah. Oh, really? We were pretty yeah. much bang on, yeah. yeah. It's really quite remarkable to have set yourself a budget and then to have stuck to it. We had a really strict budget, Excel spreadsheet, and it was down to the last penny, because you really didn't have any You're more money. You're a careful citizen. You are a careful citizen. <laughs> was she? Was she very <laughs> <Yes>. controlling? <laughs> Darren and Tracy's dream home was worth well over half a million pounds. 300,000 pounds more than their house was worth. But thanks to Tracy's strict management of their 80 grand budget, they now have their perfect property for 220,000 pounds less than their dream house would have cost. And they've made money too. If you did need to get this valued, I think it would be reasonable to assume that it's probably worth about 430,000. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Which would mean that you've created 30,000 pounds of equity in the house. Wow. Is that good? That babes. is good, yeah, we're off. <laughs> we're off to bad yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, babe. Well done. Well done.